bet this looks super familiar to you. I bet you think this is a re-upload of the same video. Well, friendo, not quite. Um, we are going to be painting a beautiful metallic betta fish on black watercolor paper today. So many of the supplies used in this tutorial are similar to the ones used in the opaque beta. This is going to be our resulting fish and this was originally recorded as a live art workshop on my YouTube channel. This is the reference image we're going to be using. I'm going to link the original source down in the description below in case you want to paint along or in case you're in the market for a beautiful beta fish to join your life. So I'm going to start by sketching my fish in using a Pilot Color Eno mechanical pencil that has yellow lead in it. If you're not recording this, you don't need it to show up on camera. You can use graphite if you wish. And one of the mistakes I made in my prior fish video is I went way too detailed with my sketch. For this, I'm really just trying to capture the most basic shapes and I'm going to let my brush do the rest of the work. So this is a tutorial, maybe you're a little bit more confident in your mark making skills, maybe you have a good eye for detail, maybe you have good hand-eye coordination, this one is for you. But if none of those things apply to you, you're still welcome to try. We learn things, we develop skills, and we find new favorite techniques by trying things and possibly making mistakes. So in case you haven't seen my other beta fish video, I'm about to show you guys a little sneak peek of the fish we painted in that one. That one utilizes more opaque watercolor techniques. I'm also pre-activating my metallic watercolor pans by adding a little bit of water to them. This activates the binder, it activates the pigments, it loosens everything up, and it means when we paint, we're gonna get a much more concentrated opaque version of the color. We're gonna get a stronger metallic with that. And we are painting on Stonehenge Aqua Black watercolor paper. I did a kitchen sink review a little while ago where I threw all sorts of different art supplies at this paper to see what works and what didn't. I'll link that down in the description below. We are also using Fine Tech watercolors as well as the Hydracolor watercolors. I have reviews for both of those. Those will be linked in case you're interested in them. But they have very similar color palettes. So similar, in fact, that I did a head-to-head -head review that I'll link for you guys as well. So I'm using the Mystic Green color. This is an interesting color because it's like a, a blue green with some black to it. Since our reference fish's head is so dark, it's like a dark green. So I'm using that as my base color and I'm starting, I'm right handed. So I'm starting from the upper right and I'm gonna work my way down to the lower left. Now I'm going in with more kind of a teal green color. I'm trying to really leave the shadows of the fish just the paper black. So I don't want to go back in with like black watercolor or black ink. I want it to just be the paper. And this is a little bit challenging for me. I do paint a lot of watercolor, but I paint in layers building up my color. So I start light and then I build up darker and darker and darker. This is kind of the opposite of what I'm used to. And it takes a little bit of flipping your brain to get used to it, but it sure is fun once you've done it. And it's a lot easier than it looks. So now we're going in with this really beautiful, brilliant blue. I think that's from the Hydracolor set. And I'm doing these kind of little half moon strokes. Really relying on your mark making for this is going to give you the best result. So if you are studying like Sumie or if you're studying Chinese watercolor, you're gonna be a shoe in for this technique. And I want wet into wet blends. I want the colors and the pigments to diffuse into the, each other. So I didn't wait for the blue, uh, the mystic green to dry, I just went straight in with this kind of peacock blue. Where the light hits kind of the belly in the back of the fish, I went in with a lighter silvery blue, mixed a bit 
with the peacock blue. You guys see I have a little palette over to the side. I'm not using that to mix up large washes of color. I'm using that to mix two colors on my brush at a given time. And now I have a bit of blue mixed with some green to make kind of a teal blue for the fish's tail. And the fish's tail is going from green to yellow. Now, one of the downsides of these palettes is I don't have a good chartreuse yellow, a good like cool yellow, greeny yellow, which would have been so good on this fish's tail. We have like a golden yellow and we have like a dandelion yellow, but we don't have a cool yellow. So I'm doing the best I can with what I've got. And I'm going to end up mixing a lighter yellow using kind of the champagne color. And I'm using three, four different fine tech sets, actually five, because I have a mini palette too, and the hydrocolor set. So if you're painting along with this, honestly, you only really need either the hydrocolor set or you need the, well, the hydrocolor doesn't come with a white. So the hydrocolor and then maybe a standalone white pearl paint or the uh, fine tech, the 12 color set that's like rainforest colors, something like that. So here I'm mixing a little bit of our warmer yellow with a little bit of the champagne lighter color. And we're gonna start with the fin that's coming directly out of the fish's abdominal region. And we're starting with that lighter color and then we're gonna blend in our darker yellows. And like I said, we're really relying on our mark making to carry this. And we want to do this wet into wet so the colors kind of blend and merge together. Then at the top of the fin, we're mixing in just a little bit of, of green, kind of where the fin meets the body, to have it kind of seep down into the fin itself. And then we're going to add some of that peacock blue down at the bottom of the fin. But we're leaving the belly of the fish completely unpainted. We use a golden yellow to paint the fin coming down from the fish's chinny chin chin. And we painted that going into the fin coming from the fish's stomach. And then we're gonna add a little bit more of a golden yellow to the bottom of the fin. Since this is so mark reliant, you're gonna to wanna to turn your paper a lot so you can get the angle that's best for your hand and your wrist. So this top fin, the dorsal fin, you have the blue merging into the yellow. So I'm gonna to try to capture that. And we're working really thickly with these paints so we get a nice opaque coverage. And you wanna try and leave the black of the paper anywhere there's shadows. Honestly, I could have gone heavier and kind of mentally added additional shadows, but I'm still fairly new to painting like this. I'm still kind of finding my way. And I'm sure the more I do it, the better I'm going to get because practice makes us stronger. I'm adding a little bit of blue towards the end of that fin. And I wanna point out that this video has been time-lapsed by about two times, but it took about 45 minutes to paint this fish. So it's not a time-consuming art project. So I lost some video here, or rather my camera was not recording at this time period. So I do apologize, but the live stream does have the full tutorial for this. So I'll link that down in the description below. You can find it in the back half of the video. 
What I did is I painted the fin in with gold and then I went in with some green while the gold was still wet and kind of worked it into the body of the fish. And then I added some of that peacock blue at the bottom of the fin and I tried to leave the fin kind of unfinished looking because if you look at the reference, we've got kind of a ruffled, tattered edge. Also going in with a bit of that mystic green color at on the back fin and just kind of blending that in while the blue is still wet. So if you enjoy tutorials like this one, I highly recommend you join me on Saturday nights at 8 p.m. CST. I have weekly art workshops. Um, it's mostly every week, not necessarily every single week since life does happen and sometimes things come up. But every week I try to think of a different fun art project that we can do together from start to finish. So we've done edigami postcards together. We talked about watercolor markers and painted a beautiful water lily. We rendered a really, really cute tree frog using alcohol markers. And of course, we painted a couple of really nice betta fish. These sort of Saturday night hangouts are really a lot of fun. They're an opportunity to hang out, to socialize, to get to know other artists, to learn new things. And I love taking suggestions from you guys because I'm always interested in what you guys want to know. That's like the inside scoop for me. So if you're interested in joining me on Saturday nights, one of the ways you can make sure you don't miss those notifications is you can consider subscribing and click the bell and that'll let you know when there's something new going on. You can also check out my community tab because I will usually announce usually like on Friday if we're streaming on Saturday night and what the topic of that stream is going to be. You guys can also keep up with my art over on Instagram at instagram.com slash natosoup. I'll often post art from the live streams as well as stuff I'm working on for upcoming videos, as well as sneak peeks at 7 Inch Kara, my watercolor comic. If you're interested in reading my comic, you can read it for free at 7inchkara.com. So I guess you guys noticed I found that footage I said was lost as you were watching that footage. So I know the audio got a little bit of goof going on, but I know you guys will forgive me for that. So I just went in and I added some green kind of to the underbelly to get it to blend in with that gold fin. We also added some peacock blue and some mystic green at the bottom of the fin as well. So I've mentioned this before and I'll mention it again now. I have a bad tendency of overworking things, of pushing things too much and not leaving well enough alone. And I really wanted to try not to do that with this one um, because I really like how it looks. I'm very satisfied with how it's coming along and I didn't want to ruin it by overworking it. There's a really nice freshness that we get with all this wet into wet blending. So I used a little bit of the white pearlescent to draw the iris in the fish's eye. And then I'm going in with just a little bit of gold since the, the fish's head, even though it's mostly darker, it does have some gold highlights where the light's like hitting the scales just the right way. So there's certain elements I did want to capture just to kind of give it that more finished look. We are just about done, but you guys can check out the full 
tutorial done in real time as I answer people's questions and I explain for the most part what I am doing by watching the recording of the live stream. I hope this was inspirational for you guys. I hope it got your mental juices going. And if you make art inspired by this, please consider showing it to me. Tag me at NatoSoup, N-A-T-T-O-S-O-U-P. I would love to see what you make. I also want to give a huge shout out to my wonderful art nerds on Patreon. Their financial support helps make this channel possible. For as little as a dollar a month, you can join their esteemed ranks and help me make tutorials like this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful, useful, and inspiring for you guys. And I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye, guys.